I created um, MPL Soccer because before it, there wasn't many easy ways to really do football data and visualize it. And I wanted somewhere, something really easy that you could really quickly get to start. Um, and MPL Soccer is a football package for visualizing data in Python. And today I'm going to talk about how to make impactful visualizations using it. So I live in Finland, and Finland is really, really cold. It snowed at the weekend, and like it's so great to be here because it's not snowing, and there's light, and it's great. But our, like, this is my front yard, and it was just absolutely full of ice and snow. And like you, had just, like, you have to get one of these big like, poles and just smash up all the ice so you can kind of just walk through the, through the front path. But I really like doing it because it's, you, like, you hit the ice and you can instantly see like, everything's clear and you can make like, a big impact like, instantly. And like, I, I'm really impact driven. I like, like actually seeing like, what happens, like, uh, what's the kind of impact of your work. And I think like, that's the best thing about like, being an analyst when you can actually make an impact and you can see like, the kind of changes at your club or your business. So I, I want to like. Uh, I think the best way to like kind of do that is through communicating like your results of analysis, and like the main way tool of doing that is through visualizations. So I have like some kind of, some kind of rules for how to do that, and there are kind of three rules. The first one is this kind of inverted pyramid that comes from like data like journalism, and it is to like focus on like the um, so you like do all your analysis you like. Uh, try and find a story, and you focus on like the most newsworthy thing in the kind of the first slide, and uh, and then the like following slides you kind of then uh, highlight the important details, and then finally you kind of come up with the, the other info. So you like basically stack all your stuff at the at the front, like the most important points, and then generally like my second rule is like when you're doing a visualization, only make one point and like make it really clear. Don't like make multiple points. And make sure there is a point of the visualization. And then the third one is like is like something that like a lot of people don't do, but like have like a really actionable message. So like sometimes there's a place for like just descriptive stats, but if you can actually tell people like what to do like based on your like information, it's like a real game changer. And then you can like uh, see like people taking, um, you know, like making an actual impact. So they like they're my three rules. Um, and like the third one is really hard to do. And I think like uh, to actually like create like this actionable message, you have to understand like what's the objective of your club or your company. And uh, um, for, for some people it might be to like win the league, for others it might be just to like survive. I was speaking to one analyst at a conference and they were just saying like, you need to get 2.3 points every game to get their objective. But it might be that you want to be like the most engaging club for fans, or it might be anything. Um, I learned this kind of approach of this uh, fast AI, fast AI course. Uh, it's called the drivetrain approach. And so once you've got your objective of the club, you like can map it to like the levers. So these are the things that you can actually pull to actually make an impact. So I was thinking about like what could you actually do, and so like I tried to map out like uh, what would be the the kind of levers at the club, and there's all these kind of like recruitment related levers like transfers, loans and contracts. Then there's all these kind of like day-to-day -day like things like uh, training, injury pre prevention and nutrition. And then like finally the kind of like the kind of match day kind of things. And then uh, one probably that you can't impact very much but some people can like the rules. These are the things that like uh, you can like, like change to like make the impact and these like might have like sub things like you might be able to like uh, say like a player has a three year, four year, five year contract. So you have to like think about all the levers. Um, I'm going to like pick this rules because I didn't want to preach to like the people that know more about football than me. So I'm going to like give an example with NPL soccer about like how to make an impactful visualization for rules. But before that, like a little bit about like what, what's good about NPL soccer. So the idea is you can like basically put in a few lines, like this kind of visualization that showing like a heat map and scatter point. And you can do it for like any kind of data provider and you can change, change that. And like the idea is that um, 
but before this happened, like if you were using opt data, you might get like a circle that's like a bit squished, or if you flip it from horizontal to vertical, you have to like watch it um, because then some of the players on the left might go to the right. So like the idea is that you can just plot this kind of scatter, and it doesn't matter which way it faces, and it will just work. And then thanks to like Anmol, he added like these other things like radars and pizza plots, and I've like plotted uh, with this Belgium data that I got from Opta. But so yeah, the three things you can do are pitches, radars, and pizza plots. So like my example about the rules, like how they create impact for visualization, I'm gonna like focus on the penalty area. I think it's like too large, I think too wide, and I think it should be like coming in. Um, and uh, there's, Currently, it's been like, uh, for 120 years, it's been exactly the same. And now we know a lot more about the sport. I think we should change it. So uh, I'm imagining that I'm in Arsene Wenger's team, and he, he has like uh, sort of a remit for the rules. So like, this is one of the like, uh, plays from my, the Belgian data. Yeah, he, he goes in, a little bit into the area, gets tackled, and they get a penalty. And I just think, like, He's running away from goal. Like, why is he getting like a shot that can get him like 78% chance of scoring from something that is like he should like 0% almost? So, this is kind of like uh, what I'm going to say. Like, let's reduce the width of the penalty area from 40 meters to 30 meters, as like too many uh, low scoring opportunities are given uh, penalties on the sides. So I used Karen's uh, expected threat model, and like, these are like kind of probabilities of scoring from these areas. And you can see it's not not much different from like anywhere else in the pitch, in the in the kind of wide areas. So I'm going to say that you should trim the five meters from the sides. So in this Belgium league that I was looking at in this season, nine percent of the uh, games were affected by goals coming from those kind of wide areas in the penalty area. And 70% uh, of the time, the scoring team from those penalties goes on to kind of win the game. And even like uh, in like 2.4% of games in the whole league, like they were, that moment in the wide area was the like decisive moment for the winning or the draw. But let's say that we did that, like what, what would be the kind of impact on that? Well, the two things I can think of like, Mainly the, uh, in these areas, there's like tackles that are causing the penalties. So like tackles could like push, there could be like more, more tackles in that area. And at the moment, the penalty area kind of acts as a barrier for, for fouls, but it seems that there's not many in that area already. So it probably won't have much of an impact. So here's my like, what Old Trafford would look like with the, my new penalty areas plotted with MPL soccer. And I think it's much better. Uh, it probably leads to better outcomes for the game. So what I tried to do through that is to focus on the most newsworthy thing first. So I pushed up to the front, like what do I actually want to happen? I had like one message in each visualization and uh, there was an actionable message. So I didn't just go like too many penalties were in the wide areas. I said like, let's reduce this to this so like, is that there's an actual message to the visualization. So like, uh, and then like finally, like how does NPR Soccer help me do all this stuff? The first one is that I can quickly use the padding options in NPR Soccer to reduce the size of the pitch. So I can zoom into the important areas of the pitch where I wanna like show the person like what's actually happening. In this case, the penalty area. Second one, I needed to like turn 30 meters into optical coordinates. And the way I did that is through my standardizer and it like works out all the uh, dimensions of the pitch and gives it accurate. Um, so here I've got like the middle of the pitch minus 50 meters and it gives me the optical coordinates. And the third thing that can help is that I can like, add images really quickly with just one function. And the best thing about MPL Soccer is the heat maps. You can like basically change the binning size like really quickly and get different heat maps out. 
And you can also get which bins. Um, so you, you can, like, not many people use this or know about this, but, like, when you do this kind of bin statistic, you can actually, like, find, like, all the passes that are in a particular square from that. So, yeah, thank you. Um, one kind of final tip, this is like an amazing tool for picking all the colors. Like visualization, like colors are like, in, like one of the main things that makes you stand out. And that tool is like incredible. John, John Ollington showed me it. And all the kind of analysis is available uh, in this kind of link if, if you want to see anything. So yeah, that's uh, how I think visualization can be more impactful and I hope that you can take some good lessons from it.